What's good everybody, this is Hoopin' Elect, and welcome back to the channel. Now today we're doing another mock draft. I'm not really a fan of mock drafts in general, but I know y'all enjoyed the last one, so I wanted to come back with another as we're still about a month away from draft day. I spent a little bit more time on this video and wasn't as rushed trying to get the video out right after the lottery. We'll give a solid explanation for the first round picks, and give you the important or interesting selections in the second just to save time. Now without further delay, let's go ahead and get into the Mock Draft 2.0. With the first selection in the draft, Minnesota takes Anthony Edwards. If it isn't because of a trade, I'd be pretty surprised if the Timberwolves don't take Edwards number one. Obviously, Minnesota would have preferred having the top pick in the 2021 draft with guys like Cade Cunningham, Jonathan Kaminga, and other bigger wings. But I do enjoy Edwards' game, and I think his game will translate to the league well, even if he's not the best fit around Cat and D'Angelo Russell. At number two, Golden State picks Denny Obdia. Based on what I've read and heard from people, the Warriors are exercising all of their options in trying to trade this pick. Things get a little bit complicated if you start doing fake trades in a mock draft. So here they take one of the most talented wings in the class, who happens to fit pretty well with what they like to do over there. He also wouldn't be under a ton of pressure to be that guy early, and I like a situation like that for him personally. Now at number 3, once again I've got the Charlotte Hornets taking LaMelo Ball. I think he's too talented for Michael Jordan and company to pass up here, despite already having two solid guards. If Charlotte decides not to take LaMelo here, I could see him falling just because the Bulls, Cavs, and Hawks have all spent major draft capital on guards over the last couple years. At that point, someone could try to swing a trade to get him, or the Pistons or Knicks could come away with a potential steal. With the fourth pick, I have Chicago taking Isaac Okoro. I think it might take him a few years to put it all together, but I like what he brings to the table as a wing who can first and foremost defend, make plays, and hopefully be an average to slightly below average shooter out the gate. I think Okoro makes a lot of sense when you're building around Kobe White, Wendell Carter Jr., possibly Zach Levine, and hopefully a Lowry Markkinen that's back on trajectory. Owning the 5 spot is the Cleveland Cavaliers. James Wiseman has been linked to the Cavs for quite a while now, and he seems like one of the guys they like the most. They're already in a weird spot, and their current roster just feels like controlled chaos, but betting on Wiseman's talent is something I'm all for at number 5. It gives you flexibility to get something out of Drummond's expiring by the deadline, and hopefully add one of those marquee guys in next year's draft to this group of talented young guys with overlapping skill sets. At 6, the Hawks pick up another wing in Devin Vassell. Now despite his decision to turn his high release point into a catapult, I still like Vassell and think he'll be fine. Most importantly for Atlanta, you're looking for guys who can contribute and complement Trey Young's game, which basically means play defense. And letting Reddish, Hunter, Herter, and Vassell battle it out for those wing minutes should make everybody on the team better. The Pistons select Killian Hayes at number 7. I think Hayes is perfect for this Pistons team and he would get to reunite with his friend Sekou Dombuya. Detroit doesn't have a lot going for them in terms of the future of their franchise outside of hopefully retaining Christian Wood and Sekou's potential, but I think you're headed in the right direction by drafting a player as skilled as Hayes is at number 7. The New York Knicks have the number 8 pick and here they take Obi Toppin. Toppin is a high flying forward with a lot of potential offensively. It's tough to make these mock draft selections for an organization that might just go out and sign 12 power forwards in an offseason, but I think if they can create a developmentary environment with the right combo of young guys and vets over the next two seasons, they'll have made some progress in getting back to being a competitive squad. At number 9, the Washington Wizards get who I think is the best big in the draft in Onyeka Okongwu. Here he'd get to play on a team with two of the best guards in the league in Wall and Beal. He may need a year to develop, and a guy like Thomas Bryant is perfect to hold that spot down for the time being. The idea of a Hachimura in Okongwu front court in the future is also pretty intriguing. Number 10, the alternative winners of the NBA bubble, the Phoenix Suns select Tyrese Halliburton. Halliburton is a versatile guard who can play both on and off the ball and has been working on his shooting release, while still unorthodox, looks quick enough to get off in more ways than it was last season. I like his fit with this Phoenix team that's missing another playmaker. And going forward, I like the potential of a Booker Halliburton backcourt as Rubio moves on. The Spurs are like Kyra Lewis Jr. with the number 11 pick. Now if you've been around the channel or heard me talk about the draft before, you know I really enjoy Kyra Lewis's game and what he brings to the table. He's as dynamic a player San Antonio would have had on their roster probably since Tony Parker. There are some other prospects left that maybe fit positional needs better, but Kyra is the best available talent in my eyes. At 12, Sacramento takes Patrick Williams, an explosive combo forward. Williams should be able to immediately provide help as another big wing body defensively 
as he continues to develop and unlock the rest of his game. With money tied up to Barnes, Heal, and likely Bogdanovich, Williams would provide some security and hopefully be a player with good value as the Kings try to make a playoff push over these next couple years. The 13th pick belongs to the New Orleans Pelicans and they select Precious Achua. Now it's not currently the best fit alongside Zion, but I think his potential and overall versatility makes a lot of sense for a budding Pelicans team. It's obviously a tough ask, but if Achua can become a decent floor spacer, the combination of him, Zion, and Lonzo Ball on a fast break is a lot of fun. Now the last pick of the lottery goes to the Boston Celtics, who I once again have selecting Tyrese Maxey. Maxi is a combo guard who happens to be one of the best guard defenders in the class. Adding him into Boston's mix of versatile defenders and scorers is a sight I think everybody would enjoy. I also think there's a bit more value in terms of bigs later on in the draft, so taking a guard here makes sense. Now that's it for the lottery, but we've still got a lot of nice players available and players who really fit well into team systems and roster needs. I've got the Magic selecting RJ Hampton at number 15. His rapid improvement as a jump shooter has boosted his stock a bit for me, and potentially pairing him with Fultz in the backcourt could be dynamic. At 16, Portland takes Sadiq Bay. I don't think there's a better pick for this Portland team than Bay. His ability to guard multiple positions, hit threes, and make a couple plays off the dribble is perfect for what Portland likes to do. Finally getting a replacement for that Aminu Harkless position should make their team even better next season. The T-Wolves are back on the clock at 17, and they take Alexi Pokusevsky. Poku has great potential. There are a lot of questions surrounding him, but what he's shown warrants a selection in this area. Maybe he ends up being a trade ship, who knows. But getting another high potential guy is perfect for a team in this position. Dallas gets Aaron Neesmith at number 18, adding another lethal weapon to a team that put up historical offensive efficiency numbers last season. I think this could be a potential great pairing for Neesmith and the Mavs. 19. The Brooklyn Nets select Desmond Bain. Bain is the type of guy the Nets need to fill out this talented but strange roster. Regardless of what combination of Dinwiddie, Levert, and Harris will be on the roster next year, Bain can contribute and will play hard at all times with no ego. The Eastern Conference champion Miami Heat choose Jalen Smith at number 20. The Heat have nailed their last two first round picks with Hero and Adebayo, and I think Jalen Smith could be great on this team. He has high potential as a shooter and a shot blocker, and in this Heat organization, his body would surely be in peak condition. I don't know if it's because we've been talking about this draft for so long, but I like how the end of this first round could shake out for certain teams. At 21, the Sixers get Cole Anthony. Anthony was a projected top 5 guy before the season started, but now he's the player I could see falling pretty far in this draft. Philly gets someone who has tremendous talent and could make things really interesting if they are able to fill out their roster with shooters. The Nuggets get Jaden McDaniels at 22. McDaniels is another guy with crazy potential, and the Nuggets are no stranger to it. They don't really need any of these rookies next season, but McDaniels is a guy who they can stash and patiently bring along as they've been doing with other guys. Theo Maladon is the pick at number 23 for the Jazz. Adding Maladon to the Mitchell Conley Clarkson guard rotation could be great for all of them. He's somebody that feels like a Jazz player and Snyder should be able to figure out how to use him. At 24, the Milwaukee Bucks get Tyrell Terry. It wouldn't surprise me if Terry ends up being the steal of the draft if he falls this far. And if he comes in and immediately makes an impact, I can see him being a factor in them keeping Giannis, whether it's via trade or wanting to play alongside him. The Thunder select Leandro Bomaro at 25. He's likely going to be a draft and stash guy, but there's really no rush with them as next year will be a huge draft year for this franchise. Adding him to the young core of SGA Darius Baisley and Lou Game 7 Dort could be fun. The Celtics need help inside and take Xavier Tillman at 26. I think he probably most closely fits what they like to do with their bigs. He's a high character guy. I just think he makes a lot of sense for their team here. At 27, the Knicks take Jemias Ramsey. Ramsey is another one of my personal favorite guys, and he has the potential to be a lethal shooter, solid defender, and a good athlete for this Knicks team that needs really whatever they can get. The 2020 champion Lakers get Grant Riller with the 28th pick. I love Grant Riller's game, He's one of the best scorers and shot creators in this draft, and I think he would be able to shine alongside LeBron and company. Toronto takes Tyler Bay at 29. Bay is a prospect that pretty much every team would be interested in. He's an athletic combo forward who's a good defender and has solid shooting potential. The Raptors getting another versatile front court or wing player fits well into what they like to do and how their current roster is built. Now the last pick of the first round belongs to the Boston Celtics who take Robert Woodard II. The Celtics have a lot of picks in this draft. Are they going to keep all of them? 
Probably not. If they did, would they all play? Again, probably not. In the event that he does, his motor and versatility make him a solid selection for Boston. Now that concludes the first round. I'm not going to get into all the picks in the second round, but I'll highlight some of the important ones and the direction certain organizations will be headed in based on the results of this draft. The Mavs get Zeke Nazi at 31. I'm higher on Nazi than a lot of people, and I think he's a potential first round guy. This is great value for them at 31. The Hornets get a potential stable center in Vernon Carey. The T Wolves show they're all about the Joneses and pick Trey. And the Sixers add some shooting with Josh Green at 34 and Elijah Hughes at 36. Now Jay Scrub goes 37 to the Wizards in what would be a great situation for him. I think he would learn a lot next to Wall and Beal and add more skills to what is already a great physical profile. Malachi Flynn to the Pelicans at 39 is another really great fit. I think they need a little bit more scoring and Flynn can do that with the best of them in this draft. And at 39, I think it would be tremendous value. The Spurs get Daniel Oturu at 41. Putting Oturu in the Spurs system could be just what he needs to make his mark in the league. They haven't had much consistency at the center spot in the past, but if things go right for him, he could at least be in their rotation at some point next season. The Pelicans getting Cassius Stanley at 42 and the Bulls getting Cassius Winston at 44 both feel like really high value picks. The Pelicans might have a real life NBA street game breaker pairing Stanley with Lonzo, Zion, and Jackson Hayes. And Cassius Winston is someone who's a borderline first round talent to me. He bring a lot of steadiness to that Bulls backcourt and organization. The Celtics take Killian Tilly at 47. He's a guy who would have flirted with the first round had it not been for some unfortunate and serious nagging injuries. Boston could be a great place for him to develop. And at 49, the Sixers bring in yet another shooter in Jordan Nawara to hopefully offset some of the issues they've had in the past and maybe usher Al Horford out of the lineup as much as possible. From here, I'm not as interested in the picks. Marcus Howard to the Kings has some Isaiah Thomas potential. The Hornets and Clippers get some help in the front court with Azubuki and Nick Richards. And the Raptors take Kareem Maine, a Canadian prep to pro prospect. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll be doing another one of these probably the week of the draft, so stay tuned for that one. I appreciate y'all rocking with the channel. It's been a grind to frequently get these videos out for you guys, but I do my best since y'all have enjoyed them as much as you have. Comment down below which pick in this mock draft is your favorite, and who do you think the best player in this class will be in five years. Thanks for watching. This is Keandre from Hoop Intellect, and I'm out.